we can talk through is this clip um, featuring Bradley Martin v Brendan Schaub. A lot of people have been saying that this was actually a decent interview. Or maybe I said that. I don't know. What people saying that? I don't know. But I think that anyway, that's what I think. I think this is a really good interview um, to give Brendan credit. To be honest, having watched a lot of content of Brendan and being aware of who he is for a very long time, being a former fan, it's pretty easy to see when he's on his best behavior. He used to do this before when he used to when he was first like introduced to Rogan. Whenever Joe whenever Brendan would go on Joe Rogan, you see the comments on sometimes a Joe Rogan subreddit or sometimes a YouTube, people would legitimately people would legitimately would legitimately wouldn't understand why he had so much hate. They'd be like, oh my God, Brendan's actually coming across like a cool guy. He comes across like a cool guy, like a chill guy because he's always been on his best behavior when he's on a platform that he feels like is bigger than his or that he feels like he'd get more from or that person's famous or whatever it may be. He'd always kind of adjust his behavior based on where he was and then we went back on his own podcast. That's where Mr. Turbo Douche Energy came from. So it's nice to see him be well behaved knowing how to put on a good show have get chemistry with the host and bradley martin and just shoot the shit and provide a little good little show but it's still to me very evident that i feel like brendan should be bradley like in a parallel universe brendan Schwab should be where bradley martin is in terms of like his profile in terms of his level of fame in terms of his reach in terms of how people kind of like him in general because you know he, he looks how he looks you know big uh what you call it, fitness guy, a bodybuilder guy. You'd think he's a bit of a donut. You think he's a bit of a Chad, but he is quite self-aware. Um, he is pretty self-deprecating. He doesn't mind laughing at himself or being the flipping, you know, being the fucking butt of the joke. Um, he can give it as much as he can give it as much. He can take it as much as he gives it. Um, he's down to troll, down to clown, down to have a good time. And it's all just kind of, again, you don't, you might not like the content and your skits and shit, I understand. It might be bath level quality. But in terms of a human being, he seems pretty chill. Right? I don't think many people out there saying, oh, this guy's a bit of a dick. Apart from maybe that whole, you know, running troll thing he's got going on about beating up UFC fighters, which I think is a genius level troll. I don't think it's a bad thing overall. Even if he does believe it, I, f I don't think anybody looks at Bradley and thinks, oh, he's a bad person. You know what I mean? You may not want to spend time with him. You may, you may not be someone that you'd want to hang out with. Cool. You may not think his content is funny, but you don't think he's a bad person, which is the main thing. Because I think in that circle, there's probably a lot of those guys, you know, the Logan Pauls come to, to mind straight away where you, you're you not really too sure what their, you know, incentives or motives are. But I used to Brad Martin, it seems pretty cool. Anyway, long story less long. Um, Bradley Martin and Brad Brendan Schaub had this chat on their on the channel. I think it was pretty good interview. I think you could see vis a vis the flipping down votes and shit. Even I gave it a bit of an upvote here. Six point seven um likes to two point seven down dislikes. The views are pretty decent as well, considering Brendan Schaub's content. I think that mostly has to do with. with with Bradley Martin, actually, the fact that he's able to get like you know three hundred fifty thousand views on this is really good. I think it's probably the most amount amount of views that any Brendan Schub content has maybe got this year, like legit. So that's pretty good in that respect. And the conversation was really good. I kind of enjoyed listening to it to be honest. I'm not gonna lie, I had it on in the background, and I thought they both came across very well. Obviously, there was a few bits and pieces that were super hilarious to flip in here, like this bit I'm gonna play to you now where they kind of have a conversation where Bradley kind of opens up and basically says, hey, I'm at the age now where I feel like I should be settling down and not chasing all this punani everywhere. And Brendan gives him some tips on what he's done and stuff. And it's funny when you consider all the drama and controversy around Brendan and the truck walks and the you know, with Annie Lederman, the sliding into Kalila's DMs when he's married and she's going out of Bobby Lee, who's meant to be his friend, the supposed video of him cheating on his wife, handing that woman a note when he was, you know, doing that live stream with Mike Tyson and, and DC and shit and the Addies and Baddies text leaks. It's just funny to hear him talk about what he's talking about here, but I still think he has a point just because he might, you know, be out in the street still. I don't think he takes away from the point that they're basically saying. So I'll play the clip and then I'll give you some of my interjection here and there. Damn, but you I'm just surprised. woke up one day and was like, ah, I got to yeah. start. So I woke up one day and I was like, I'm 34. And I was like, okay, I keep I can keep doing this shit. Next thing you know, I'll be 40. And I just, I I know that like, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. But like, like I've kind of just shifted my focus on this content in general. Like focus more on the podcast stuff. Um, and I just realized like I really, I've always wanted a family. But I don't know. It's just, it's just a, I'm just ready for a different part of my life like i have everything it's the else best established. thing too you know, i've done a bunch of cool shit in my life and nothing better than being a dad like yeah. it's so dope dude and like you're missing out you're missing out on why you're here 
you're yeah. here to procreate and make kids, dude. Yeah. And you're a good person. Like the world needs more Bradley Martins. That would be a better place. So by you being selfish and just making fucking TikTok videos, hanging out with 21 year olds, like, all right, good for you. It's so selfish, dog. Yeah, it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, and at some point, like you're going to want a legacy. And if you wait till you're 50, to have kids. All right, dude, if you wait till you're 40 to have kids, when that kid's 10, you're 50, dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to so lie. Like, I mean, my, my issue, my big issue is just like, honestly, I'll be, I'll be straight transparent, man. I just played the bullshit game with girls for too long. Like where I was it's like. It's exhausting. Yeah. Um, it's fucking terrible, man. Like it's all your dude, energy and especially as a creator, like it sidetracked you from yeah. your actual goals. It was cool when I was like 24, 25, 26, 27. And then I remember around like 28, I was like, dude, what am I doing? But I was so kind of like in it. It was and probably it was, doing well, crushing it. Still so doing like, well. I keep doing this. So I could just kind of like justify that like, oh, it's okay. But then like, I just realized like I just focused not so much on girls, but I just focused so much on, excuse me, work that, you know, a few more years go by and I'm like, oh shit, I'm 32. What the fuck? And then I'm like, okay, now nah, nah, I really need to like lock this in. I need to like figure this out. I can't like. I can't just like try to just fuck some girl because I think she's attractive anymore. It can't be just about that. You no, know what man. I'm saying? At some point, it's like, why am I doing all this? You want to be 50 living in this place by yourself? Fuck you know how fucking no. sad that is? That's, t that's depressing. And you're man. calling me like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm like, no, dude. Yeah, do you have my kids, kids yet? Baseball game. What <laughs> yeah. the fuck? You know, it's like, it's just not a way to live, dog. The funny thing he mentions about hanging out, calling him, it could, it could be argued, and I'll make the argument that Brenda would probably be a far nicer person if he did have more Bradley Martins around him. That actually would be the better way to go about it because there's a part of me that thinks, hey, okay, the guy's a, you know, a douchebag and he doesn't come across well and he's obviously done some awful things over the years and stuff and definitely doesn't speak the best and whatever it may be and lies, steals, cheats, all that good stuff, right? But part of me also thinks maybe part of the reason why he's like that is the environment. I just can't, there's something in me that kind of gives me the feeling that something... There's something ultimately very toxic about that whole scene, especially in LA, that just breeds this kind of level of personality where you're where you're a bit, you know, you're a bit you you got because I think every comedian has a little bit of Brendan in them. They have a little bit of sprinkling of Brendan Shaw in them. So if that's the case, then I think most likely everybody in that fucking scene also is quite toxic and they all kind of, you know, rub off on each other. So maybe if this guy did hang around with Bradley Martin more often. He might be a little bit more chill. He might be a little bit more likable. Maybe. Who knows? Yeah. It's interesting how, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I just got so caught up in work. That's fair. Because you, you're still young, uh, yeah. young enough where you can make the change. When did you have your first kid? My son is seven. So I had my first kid at 33. Fuck. Behind, dude. You're all right, though. I always feel, and that's, that's part of the thing that fucks me up is, like, I'll be like, oh, shit, like, I'm, it's la I'm late now. You know? For guys, it's different. Yeah. Now, if a girl's forty and don't have kids, it just the chance of a successful birth, pregnancy, yeah, goes down. So for girls, a little that clock's a little more like this. Yeah. But you're, you're gonna meet the right one, and you're gonna know too. I and like Charlemagne said this, and he's wildly successful. Charlemagne goes, if you notice the most successful people, what's the one thing they have in common? They all have wives or girlfriends that hold them down. Yeah. Because they're man. not wasting time and energy and resources. And ch chasing all these random girls. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he choked. I'm not too sure if that was a. Uh, I'm not too sure if that was. If that was one of those telltale signs where, like, his spirit and his soul couldn't like say the lie without choking a little bit, right? That was kind of funny, don't you think? He kind of stuck, <clears throat> right? Because maybe you know. Deep down inside his subconscious, he knows he's got a flipping iPhone full of addies and baddies conversations going on. Let's just rewind that one more time. Let's do that one more time then. I thought that was really funny, that little cough. <laughs> listen, listen, one more time. Charlemagne said this, and he's wildly successful. Charlemagne goes, if you notice the most successful people, what's the one thing they have in common? They all have wives or girlfriends that hold them down. Because yeah, they're man. not wasting time and energy and resources and ch <clears throat> chasing all these random girls. <laughs> <laughs> chasing all these random girls <clears throat> i'm not gay <clears throat> you know what i mean that stuff is a, I feel incredible but i do think he's right there is a there is a um, there is some truth in what he's saying i think i've said it for the longest time i think there should be a documentary made about the partners of famous comedians in general because i feel like they are some they are in, in my opinion this kind of unsung heroes 
because they essentially allow these grown men who for the most part you know are wallowing in obscurity for the majority of their relationship because think about being a comedian right it takes a long time to be a good one unless you get the joe rogan stamp of approval like flipping brendan didn't you skip the queue for the most part it takes 10 plus years to make it so you probably spend the most you know the most part of your flipping late 20s maybe early 30s maybe even 40s being incredibly broke incredibly poor trying to chase this dream of becoming a stand-up comedian and you know more than not if you've got a bit of talent you've got a bit of hustle if you just stick with it most likely you will maybe get there especially now in the days of flipping podcasting and stuff there is ways to kind of figure it out and even if you don't make it as a stand-up comedian you can become a writer you can work on the show be a producer blah blah there's those little avenues you could go down right so with that being said imagine the partners of these people they get with these guys when they're wallowing in flipping obscurity no one knows who they are they're dead broke they're doing bits you know little comedy spots here and there locally and then all of a sudden it just switches a switch goes off and they go from being relatively unknown hardly going on tour doing local gigs and coming back home and hanging out with you and now suddenly they're on road all the time now suddenly they're on the tour they're on tour all the time now suddenly they're doing podcasts all the time now suddenly at the club all the time right and then you having to hold it down so you got this guy that you're with that was not famous then suddenly in a short space of time they become incredibly famous and you have to adjust to that in real time you have to kind of get used to you know kind of being okay with having you know this new lifestyle where maybe you don't see your partner all the time maybe you're not the main priority maybe you have to flip and be okay with seeing pictures on instagram that maybe would make you a bit pissed off if you weren't that famous i don't know it all changes you get loads more attention from the fans and stuff with dms blah 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 it just becomes all sorts of crazy nonsense so there is something to be said for being the partner of a you know really successful professional stand-up comedian because it requires a level of flipping a level of i don't know a level of <laughs> a level of strength that i think most people don't really take into consideration aside from all the gifts and rewards you're gonna get most of the time if your guy makes it you're gonna you know essentially live a life of luxury you can be a stay-at-home mom and just you know basically go and shop every single day drive loads of nice cars and fly private here and there and have all your flipping needs looked after cool but in terms of that relationship that kind of companionship type of thing it does kind of suffer because this person has to be on a single-minded pursuit to chase his dream you know and it takes a long time to get there so maybe you do need somebody to hold you down at home so that you can have a clear mind to go after your dreams because the last thing you want to be worried about is you know what's going on back home you want to know that it's all good it's all gucci so that you can continue going to these comedy clubs around the country you can continue to finger blast these waitresses in the bathrooms you know get fucking <laughs> blowjobs from these assistants you know in the green room and shit do your gear at the club drink as much as you want to drink and go back and pretend everything's gucci you need to have a clear conscience for it right and they give you that clear conscience and maybe they also look the other way they know more than likely you're not interviewing these porn stars because you want to get an idea of what the industry is like. They know you're probably doing it because you want to smash, but they have to kind of look the other way. So maybe you do need somebody who's able to kind of put up with your nonsense. They're, they're okay with you becoming famous in your mid-40s. They're okay with you hanging out with loads of flipping floozies. And, you know, you know, I'm sure the open mic scene of comedians is fucking wild, right? In terms of the dynamic between professional ones and the ones that are coming up, especially their women and shit and sexual favors and stuff they have to be okay with all of that to make it work so it's a sort of weird kind of let me say symbiotic relationship but there is a lot of kind of you know that you have to find your match in that regard so i definitely understand what you're saying here they have the one thing that holds them down yeah He's that's right. the thing and dude i've and i've seen that for years now and it's like now i'm starting to really recognize how actually important that is but the question is like when do you know you have like exactly the right one like when she lets you get away with the fucking what you call it walk me to my truck drama when she lets you get away with the fucking annie you know the kalila dm drama when she lets you get away with the fucking dms drama right addies and baddies that's when you know you got the one in that in their case i think in a regular schedule regular schmegel civilians like ourselves we don't have that luxury to be honest because you know we're just regular guys you know our regular partners can go get other decent regular partners that could maybe look after them in a better way if you do do something to break their trust but i think with these guys you know some people some i think some people have said oh i've saw some people saying comments why doesn't leanne christ leave Bert or something right he's just you know he's an alcoholic he's this he's that it's like bruh like 
you get looked like you know you get looked after and so maybe sometimes in some relationship dynamics as well there is that dynamic that exists where some women just like to look after the guy like treat them like an adult baby type of thing right or work on them like a project or something wanting to fix them so maybe in that dynamic that's how it works or maybe it's just pure love there maybe that's just how the balance works he goes out and gets trash gets drunk comes back home and you know he knows the wife is probably going to look after the stuff back home in that regard so it is pretty important to find that you know person who's able to maybe absorb and take all that stuff in it's a bit weird to mention all this stuff because it sounds a bit crazy and it's sounding like i'm kind of excusing this behavior but unfortunately this is the reality of the world like, i don't know you... if you ever know if you have the right i knew from day one when i met her, i'm like oh she'd be a dope ass mom because brian has kids great wife never met him kids and she's so good with him and i was like oh my god she'd be such a good mom yeah i've always wanted to be a dad i love kids yeah. i would have 10 kids if i could i love kids my wife's a hater though that's a weird thing to say to somebody isn't it right you see them play hanging around with you see you see how they are with your f friends kids who are like i, like, I don't know they, they must have been teenagers at that, at that time and then you instantly think oh yeah she could be a good mum. I, I never thought about that in, in my life but hey maybe my brain works differently she only wants three but I would, i'd love like 10 i just i live for kids i've kids done it i've done everything done. you like kids cars and shoes yeah that's what yeah, i know about you yeah 100 percent. i love it but being a dad there's nothing better dude like i can't wait to get home it's a Monday, bro. I got butterflies driving home to see my kids. Wow. <laughs> I love this new persona he has. This beast of a dad persona is fucking incredible. Butterflies before I get home. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> Let's relax now. Uh, niggas talking about his kids like their new iPhones and shit. <laughs> Nothing better. My kid's in baseball and he, like, he's getting good at it. It's so dope. Oh, it's dope, dude. And I can see his like the, the, the little Kobe mentality in him. Like, we'll be at the band cage and be like, again, it's 40 pitches. Again. I'm like, this boy, where do you get that? And his mom's like, geez, I wonder. That's how I was. Yeah. And then I can, the tools that I have and the discipline you have, you pass that down to him. And now he's eating right. He's working out. He's coming to the gym with me. Like, think about Remember, this kid is seven years old. About you, if you had a son going to the gym with dad. Oh, man, it'd be so cool. You're fucking Superman. And you know yeah. your way around. So you're introducing him to this workout and that workout. Yeah. And you eat this, not that. And they eat it all up and then they're seeing results. You're like, damn, dog. Make a little fucking terminator. Or my, dude, my son, like he just gravitates towards baseball. He's done it all. He's a freak athlete, so he's good at everything he does. <laughs> but he loves baseball. Baseball's tough, man. What if what would have what would have happened? Because again, I don't, you know, I don't I'm not gonna doubt this guy's kids flipping athletic abilities. Who knows, right? He may be a freak. But what would have happened if the kid didn't show a tendency to be good at sports or something and just wanted to chill, just wanted to be a kid? You know, with snot on his nose, playing with flipping cars, hanging around, jumping off of shit. Like, what would have then happened? Would that would that have been an issue? Would he have been pissed off? Would he be on trying to push him into a sport? Because the way he's bragging about this stuff is really bizarre because, you know, kids are just kids. They're malleable. Maybe he just wants to spend time with his dad. That's why he's doing this stuff, because he knows his dad flipping gets excited when he does this sort of shit and he just kind of does it because he wants to spend time with him. I don't know. It's just weird. It's a strange thing to kind of really really be it's it's strange because I, in one aspect i think obviously it's good to be proud of it but in some respects it's sort of like it's kind of given that idea of like you know you're sort of trying to funnel your unfulfilled dreams and stuff through your children a little bit it's giving that tiny bit an inchy inchy bit which i'm sure it isn't the case because you know brendan has spoken about how difficult it was growing up having a dad that was flipping pushing him super hard with sports and shit so i'm sure that's not the thing you don't want to repeat the same mistakes, but it's a bit odd. This kid is seven. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> even if he doesn't end up becoming, you know, a famous baseball batter or something, it's not going to be because of this work they're doing now. It's going to become. It's going to be because it's going to be because of stuff that happens later on in their teenage years. Those are the real crucial times. You know what I mean? When they discover girls and they discover flipping booze and drugs and stuff, will they make the decision then to flip and stick with sports? Now it's just them fucking around and playing around and wanting to hang out with their dad. I'd think. Hey, what do I know? Baseball super. You, know, you think he'll be tall like you? Yeah, I yeah. think he'll be six four minimum. Nice. So he loves baseball, but baseball's tough. And the league that he's in, well, the camp he's in is like elite kids, like a bunch of Dodgers kids are there, Padres. Like they're fucking good, man. He's never played a game of baseball. He's only played with me. So his first week of camp doesn't get a hit, but every day he wants me to work with him. So I'm working with him and his coach how to hit, how to hit. Second week at camp, wins MVP. Goes for five for five every day. <laughs> so just working with him. <laughs>
<laughs> winning MVP at seven years old. Uh, it's fucking hilarious, man. Every day, yeah. then the following day, seeing it pay off, you're like, oh, dude, this is the best. I need that. Anyway, so you get the gist anyway. Um, that aside and that kind of weird dynamic aside, I still do think it was one of the better Brendan Schwab interviews out there. So if you haven't checked it out, do. It's on Bradley Martin's um, channel. His podcast one called Bradley Martin's Raw Talk. It's Bradley Martin v. Brendan Shaw with the Street Fight, Jake Paul v. Nate Diaz predictions. Um, I think, again, he presents himself in a good way. But if you know anything about Brendan and you see enough content of his, you'll know that he tends to do this all the time. He's always on his best behavior on other people's platforms, especially when he feels like he has something to gain from it. And obviously, you know, he looks up to Bradley in some respects as well. So there's that mutual respect there. So don't read too much into this as if like, oh, this is the guy he is. Because unfortunately, there's many many years and many many clips of evidence out there that show that maybe you know he's not the greatest guy in the world but hey what what can you do it kind of is what it is in that respect